I wanted to use my football experience as a way to, to get an opportunity. Um, and so I was able to cover um, university football to start because that's the language that I spoke. Mm -hmm. And in my last year playing at um, Western, I, I, the score had the university coverage at the time. I was like, listen, you know, I'm, I'm fully expecting to win a Vanier Cup. And, and I, this one I was interning um, at the score that summer before my last season. But anyway, how we lose. I'm happy to come and help with your coverage and whatnot. And this is the first year they had the venue. So it was like the Super Bowl for them at the time. Yeah. And um, they're like, yeah, okay, cool. So we lose. I drove myself to Ottawa, helped them on their coverage, like I, just behind the scenes, like not yeah. on camera. And I'm thinking like, you know, in the playoffs, they bring like, okay, yo, D'Angelo Hall, come in here. You just played, you know, let's break it down, whatever. Uh, no, I was like rolling cables. I was in the booth. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it was it was no glamorous thing. I was not in studio oh. with Steph Potasic and Jesse London. I was like rolling cable. I was in for the Vanier. Um, it was in uh, Saskatchewan. It was in Regina, and um, I was like, "Yo, you know, I can I can fly out and help you guys if you want." And they're like, "Really?" And even in my head, you know, when sometimes you have like an out of body experience where you're watching yourself do something, yeah. and I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> And uh, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to save up a little bit of money. Um, instead of going on a spring break trip, I'll fly out there, put myself up, um, and uh, I'll, I'll do whatever you need. And they're like, yeah, at least we have no budget to bring you up, but we can use the help, so come through. So I did, and um, that was kind of like, you know, my bet on yourself movement before Van Vliet. Yeah. Um, it was not glamorous. I was, my role that week was I was in the booth standing behind McAuliffe, Tim McAuliffe and Dwayne Ford, who were calling the game. And I was on a cell phone. I was on my um, my, 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 my sidekick, which I <laughs> drove to Buffalo to buy because we didn't have them here and got them unlocked. And I would be talking to them in the, in a, in a, back in Toronto, telling them where the ball was spotted and thus where they should put the first down line, like oh, the virtual first wow. down line. Yeah, like now, like, you know, some satellite probably just does it by yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. But now, like, that's what it was like. So, yo, I'm the ball's spotted here, so the first down line has to be X in front of that. Right. I mean, but I'm, like, whispering because I don't want to get picked up on the telecast because McCallum is looking over his shoulder giving me a screw face. <laughs> so, um, so that was it. Not glamorous at all. But that week out in um, uh, Regina, um, like, firsthand it was like an education on the industry uh because since it was a big deal for the score everyone was oh. there so cabbie was there doing hits obviously McAuliffe was doing the game with Dwayne Ford Sid Sixero was there uh and then Virk was there who was at ESPN is now at the zone Sarah Lesky was doing pregame wow. she is now at uh TSN like um what's that he's doing sideline reporting she's doing sidelines at, at uh at TSN, um, it, but not even just the people in in front of the camera. All of the production staff were all or, were all people still working in the industry, doing like much bigger things. So uh, Don Landis, who directs a lot of CFL games, and she's the go-to person at CTV. Just to give you a level of understanding of how real she is, the last time there was the royal wedding, like she directed the Canadian coverage. Like wow. that's like, she's legit, but she was on that yeah. Vanier Cup broadcast, right? So all these people who went on to do amazing things in the industry, um, uh, I got to see them work f firsthand. And I, and, but also they got to see me work and they got to see like, okay, yo, this kid, like he's about his business. Like he's taking this craft serious. He's trying to learn. And so when I graduated, it was something that was a differentiator from the rest of my graduating class who all wanted to get into media. So I got a, a shot at the score. Again, super entry level. It, my first job was working in closed captioning. Um, and, they, and they had this uh, system. It was like basically Siri before Siri, where you watch what's going on and then you re-say everything that you hear. And then the automated system spits out what you say for, for people who are watching with closed captions. And then you just manually put in like the the punctuation and which speakers talking like that. And it was a terrible job. And I got all of the the night and weekend shifts. Um, but it it got me in the door and it allowed me to do other stuff and just hustle 
similarly and do stuff for free, do stuff for free until, um, until I could get some paper doing it. I, I started producing, associate producing, and for free, had so many ideas. Eventually, they, they, I got part-time doing that. And I had so much stuff on the go that the hosts were getting pissed off that they'd have to like come into the booth where I was voicing stuff and like point and do sign language to, to ask me questions about my scripts. So they're like, yo, can we just hire this dude full time already? So he doesn't have to be <laughs> yeah. the Amon family and have three jobs at the same <laughs> workplace. <laughs> and so that's how I got, that's how I got uh, full time as a producer. And then I was producing so much stuff that I didn't have hosts to be in the stuff. So I was like, I'll front stuff. Um, and like I, uh, I was, we had, um, it's funny how your opportunities in life just come. You never know when they're going to come, but you have to be ready. We had, uh, we got, we got the NCAA tournament. Big deal for us. Yeah. McCall one of the pieces of advice McAuliffe gave me was, um, have like 10 ideas ready, pitch them. And if they're down for two, it's only 20%, but that's two new things you're working on. And always kind of believe that like if something doesn't work out, you're good because you, you, you're good enough to come up with the next idea. So I pitched all these NCAA ideas and I was starting to do some production on that. Um, and then one of the producers, like a feature producer who was doing a feature on Syracuse because they stay having Canadians on their basketball team. Yep. And he kind of was just doing so many. He was on the road. He was missing his family. He was a bit sick. He's like, I'm, uh, I'm out like in, I'm not going to do this one. And then the supervising producer is like, yo, uh, this guy needs a break. Do you want to go do this Syracuse feature? Yeah, down. Never done anything before like that. But I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I go out, shoot this feature, uh, Syracuse. Um, we were supposed to get two. And then I was talking to the PR. I'm like, yo, I can get uh, these. Uh, we've got these two. Um, can I get a next one? Yeah, okay, we work it out. He gives me another player. So I did the two properly the way I was supposed to. I'm, I'm the producer, I'm yeah. on the camera, behind the camera, getting the answers. And then for the last one, I'm like, yo, I'm going to put myself in this one. And the, that's kind of how I'm going to get on, kind of on air. We do it, whatnot, goes well. So I come back, I'm like, yo, got the two, we're good. Here you go. Also, I got this next one, this third one, I'm in it. Are you interested? If not, it's cool. No yeah. harm or foul. You asked me yeah. to get two. Yeah. But I have an next one. I'm in it. They're like, yeah, we'll, we'll take it. And so the next year that came around, the next season, not only was I, by then, not only was I doing uh, NCAA features and producing them, it was just an expectation that I would be in them. Like, oh, well, we're, you're going to do it. You're going to do both. We, we yeah. don't have to send a host. We're going to save money and, and you're going to do it. Um, and, and similarly, when there was a change in who was producing the college football games that I was on, the university ones, uh, it, when that new producer came in, I'm like, yo, we need to do some halftime features just to, to fill in the time. And, you know, I can do them. I can tell those stories. And he didn't really know how it went down before. Right. And he's like, okay. So that's how we started doing halftime features. And, and I was in them. And then the halftime features went from from youth sports football to CFL football, from CFL football to NFL football, from NFL to NBA, and then it just builds, right? So um, it's all continued to build, to build, to build, to build, to build um, until, uh, until, you know, until I have the pleasure to be on this podcast. That's what we built to. So mama, I made it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. hey, that's, that's, that's definitely inspiring because I'm looking at your journey. I'm thinking, you know, it's kind of, you know, the same kind of path that I'm thinking I want to go down. So it's interesting to hear that because I'm kind of trying to follow in your footsteps. You know, I've been playing for a while and media is something I've always been interested in, but just never, you know, kind of had the time to, you know, put the footsteps in. So this year I was like, okay, I'm going to do as many things I can do. I want to go work the combine, you know, I'll do some media for that. And that was all set up, but obviously the pandemic hit and, you know, things got put on the back burner. So I'm like, okay, let me just start a podcast, start talking to my friends, you know, teammates and, you know, cool people. And that's why you're on um, and, and see where that takes me. So it's been super fun.